Good morning. One of the things that we hear a lot as marketers that we hear as complaints from people is I don't know how to sound like me. I don't know what my voice is. I don't know what that even means. I don't know how to not sound like everybody else or sound like a robot. People don't want to be, I, the way that I say this is you don't want to be vanilla. You want to be, you know, maple bacon or pistachio. <laughs> Claudia always laughs when I talk about that. So today I, it's Friday. So I have Claudia back. She's my favorite marketing expert. And we are talking about voice. Claudia, will you introduce yourself and tell us about your expertise before we get too far? Yes. Thank you. My expertise is marketing. And what I do is I see why your marketing is not performing. And I come in with my laser eye and fix everything. And you're up and running with the things you, you do. So that's okay. a very short version. <laughs> it, it, but, it's a, but that's all we need, right? Like that's what we need is a short version. So tell it, let's talk about voice. What do you see as the problem with people's voice when it comes to marketing? What's the challenge? Well, I think first, the first thing is that voice is one of those container words that can mean anything to anybody, <laughs> you know? So like authenticity and that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. That's the first misconception. Then the second thing is that when entrepreneurs do their branding, many of them limit to the graphical expressions of their branding, which is the logo, the colors, the style, the visual style. But there is a step previous to it, which is internal branding, where you talk mm -hmm. about what your values are, what is your tone of voice, uh, what is the, the words you are going to use, how do you want to express yourself? And that mm -hmm. is, uh, in many cases, it's a, it's a step that if you don't do a full branding for your for your company or for yourself, uh, you tend to obviate that. And that reflects then when you're writing or you're creating things that some days you are humorous and other days you are more academic. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then you are like, okay, what am I today? Am I vanilla or am I... <laughs> Mint chocolate chip. <laughs> bacon, bacon, what am I today? Maple. You think the idea of maple bacon ice cream is disgusting. I know you do. But here in America, there is maple bacon ice cream. I know that in America, bacon is everything. So. <laughs> so. Americans love their bacon. <laughs> well, there, there is ground to it. But so, you know, essentially your voice starts to take shape in your branding exercise. And mm -hmm. it's not an isolated thing, you know. Because voice, what is voice? Voice is the personality with, who, with which you step into the market. So okay. how, how does that personality look? And you have to be sure what it is because then when you write or when you create videos or whatever content you're going to create, it needs to reflect your personality. And that's when, for instance, your content pillars, which is, I know it's one of the things you hammer uh, your people with, and it's very good, that's where you can start to see how your voice is. Because one thing is, what is your personality? And the other thing is the implementation of that personality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for instance, I helped a group of uh, Latin American entrepreneurs in the gastronomic industry mm -hmm. to do their branding. And they wanted to disrupt the space and what they wanted to do was they wanted to bring forward for all the entrepreneurs the kind of information that you hear only when you are in a business club or in the sea rooms, you know, that oh yeah, 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 yeah. That privileged information. But they wanted to bring it with a tone of voice that was irreverent and at the same time straightforward. So we found some examples. But then when they brought new writers to the team, it was very difficult for these new people to understand how to translate that voice. And in the end, they became kind of like the content everybody does. So it's tricky. When you say they brought people on, does that mean they brought on like a copywriter or, or even an assistant to try to create the content for them? Yes, they, they had writers to, create, to write blogs for them. Because one of their plans was to create content weekly, twice a week. So, mm -hmm. you know, you either manage your company and find clients or you create content at that scale. Yes, and, yes. Uh, on your own starting. So when they brought new people on board, it was very difficult to explain 
how to combi that because they didn't have enough material to show the people. So they had this brand in their heads, but immediately they brought new people without having left the brand themselves. So this is an interesting point that I would love to explore a little bit because until you find your voice as your own, if you're a personal brand, like most of the people that you and I work with are personal brands or service-based entrepreneurs, et cetera, it's really hard to hire somebody to write your stuff for you if you don't even know your own voice. Yeah. And I don't think enough people spend time really deciding on their voice. They either want to sound like everybody else, or maybe they want to sound like their mentor. That's another thing I see. Like, uh, So they just sound like a cookie cutter version of somebody else. And I think it's scary for people to want to infuse their personality into their content because what if people don't like it? Then that means they don't like me. Yes, it's. I think it's finding your voice is a process because you start with what is what you want to bring to the market as a result of your market research and the holes you see in the market and how you want to make yourself different from the market. But you need to find the point where that is also in communion with who you are. You know, you you can't have a light tone if you are somebody who's serious and and somebody who doesn't know how to tell a joke, you know, (laughs) or you have have this sarcastic sense of humor that you can only interpret if you're hearing it Mm. in the voice, if you're hearing it in the real life. So you need to be very careful what part of your personality are you bringing and if and if that if you can hold it so and that mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is a, a, a try out you you put things out and you see how they work and i think you set the base of your voice and as you move on and you create new new content and and you see how it works you fine tune it it's a work in progress but you need to have a yeah. base so it's kind of like you have to be experimenting and be willing to put it out there and see what lands with people the experimenting, but you need a framework because okay. otherwise you would be experimenting in all directions. So sure. you need to have the basis. So what is my personality? My personality is, is didactic. I want to teach. I, For instance, mm-hmm. I want to make mar- unravel marketing for people. So one of the things that I do in all of my content is that I solve a problem. I clarify a concept. I unravel marketing. So when I create something, I need to check is it doing that? So to unravel marketing, then I need to see, okay, am I talking to my people? You know, am I being clear and I'm being plain without being too basic or too too lame in terms that you become too simple? So, and that is what, what makes your voice. So you, you set the basis in your branding and as you move on with this framework, then you fine tune it. It's not something that you decide, oh, I am this and it will happen. Very rare. But don't you have to really tune into who your personality is and and how you speak to, maybe how you speak to your clients, uh, how you speak in your real life. You know, if I tried, oh my God, if I tried to, I'm trying to think of how to describe my voice, which is a a straightforward voice, but I do like some levity and I like to tell stories, but I'm not like, uh, I would not say my voice is pushy or loud. That's not, that's not the way I wanted to be, but there are plenty of marketers who like, their whole thing is like this is the one way to do it. This is the this is the right way to do it. They My don't way have is voice. They, they don't, don't what? They don't have a clear understanding what their voice is. I you like know, that. Okay. The ideal voice is then again where you find this communion between your personality and what, what and what works in your market. That is your voice. So, for instance, if you're a lawyer and you have sense of humor, I am not sure how that is going to work out in that industry. Mm, unless you really knew that you wanted to work, that the people who wanted to work with you were looking for something than a traditional lawyer. Yes. But then so it really matches up with your buyer's persona, right? Yes. Always <laughs> comes back to buyer's persona. What a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> so who is yes. it that you want to attract? Actually, I was just writing a sales page. And uh, one of the things I had to write was, who isn't this program for? I was writing about my membership site. And I said, if you don't like cursing, I'm not, you know, like this isn't the program for you because I like to curse. And so I don't, I want to, in my voice, repel the people who are, they're not, uh, that I'm not going to resonate with. So I think that's part of an important part of voice that maybe we don't spend enough time really unraveling. 
Yes, but at the same time, you know, the cursing is a very interesting example what you're using because, and this is very American, okay? You have the F word, okay? And you can't say the F word. But then you have a book that is, I don't give a F word about anything. And right. in one page, he has it like seven times. So he really overdoes it, you know? And mm-hmm. then you're like, is this really necessary? You know, mm-hmm. I, you know, we agreed I can do with some person, but don't overdo it. And Mm -hmm. you see, that's the point where you need to be clear what your personality is. You don't need seven out of 10 words, seven F words. I mean, there needs to be some balance. I want to talk about this because I'm somebody who likes to curse, as we all know, and I use the F word. But there was a woman I was following and I even bought one of her programs. And she, again, was, it was like her cursing was so over the top. And it was like a a constant wave of it that even for me, I was like, Oh, I'm not your person. Like, and there's another person I follow who's kind of ranty. Their voice is very, you know, er they're like angry all the time about everything. And I just decided like that voice wasn't a voice. Like I really wanted to be in conversation with anymore. It was just too, either too negative or too ranty or too, too much for me. So what I like about that is they didn't have to change their voice to please me. I just decided like, oh, that's just not a voice I want to be around anymore. And so I really am glad we're having this conversation because when you step into your voice, you are definitely going to repel some people because we want that. We want to get rid of some of the people in our, in our audience who aren't our people. Definitely. And you know, you want your people to become also your ambassadors. So the the liking doesn't need to be hundred percent but needs to be around 80%. So there are things like, okay, I can stand this, but her content is so good, or she's really good Mm -hmm. with with communicating it, that I don't care about that 20%. Then again, there is the interpretation, how disruptive you want to be, and how are you, then again, you're going to translate that sense of disruption. Is it, how is that you are going to disrupt? Are you going to disrupt by using maybe unnecessarily curse words. You know, I use the occasional shit and crap and, uh, you know, <laughs> but those are human. In in the proportion you and I use it, it's maybe not ladylike, but it's human. <laughs> so like, shit. <laughs> but, you know, you, you were just saying, it, go ahead. When you overdo it, then you are out of your voice. Well, I realize as we're talking, the whole point of your voice is to differentiate yourself in the market. Everybody I talk to says my market is saturated everybody from photographers to marketers, like everybody says my, my market is saturated. So how do we differentiate ourselves? And one of the ways that we do that is by stepping into our voice. We might, but I think a lazy way that we get into differentiating ourselves is by saying, Oh, I will offer a lot of how to content Mm -hmm. because how to content is a way to differentiate myself and show people that I know what I'm talking about. But the how to content is actually harmful because it makes your audience feel like, oh, I can do this myself. I, it's, it's harmful. And I've talked about that before. But this is interesting. If you can differentiate yourself with your voice and your personality, and you don't have to be somebody else, then making content and marketing will be so much easier for you. Definitely. You don't have to always do the heavy lifting with the how content. No, but you know, then again, if you do how content, you need to bounce it with your content pillars, which is something that your followers know very well. So I am most positive that if you bounce how content against any content pillars, it will fall through the cracks because Mm -hmm. you say, okay, am I helping my people? Yes. Can they do it by themselves? Yes. What happens if they do it by themselves? They will get in trouble. Yes, that's why they are in trouble. Am I really helping them? No. The occasional how-to is perfect, but if, if sure. how-to becomes the thick of your content, uh, yes, it's going yeah, to So, so let, can we just talk for a few moments about how to develop our voice? When I was, a high, was, I was a college professor, I used to teach writing, and I was an English professor, and voice was something that my, my students didn't really know how to do. And again, this is more academic setting than a marketing setting. So it's a little bit different, but I would put up two kind of, and it was a silly thing I did. I put up two diaries from a dog and a cat. And the, the dog was like, he came home. He fed me breakfast. He took me for a walk. He came <laughs> home again. Right? Like that was the dog's diary. And, and the, dog, <laughs> the cat was like, 
I had to be moved from the from my favorite chair. I was so annoyed. I had to wake him up in the middle of the night because I was hungry. It was just like a totally different boy. <laughs> and this is a good question that Liz actually shares with us. We'll, we'll address that in a second, Liz. But the voice is a little bit going inside of like who you are and really exploring who you want to be, who you don't want to be in your... And Liz's question is, but who cares about me? Who cares about my voice as the marketer? And I just would love for Claudia to, she, th- she Liz thinks her audience is always thinking, I just want the results. But I know that before your audience can have results, they need to like you, trust you, get to know you a little bit and believe you that they can have that result that you're promising them. So the voice is important because if they don't like you and they're not resonating with your voice, they're not going to come along with you to get any kind of result. Not what do you think that. about that, Claudia? Not only that, but your voice helps you to be coherent and to be consistent. Mm-hmm. And the things you have to have in marketing is coherence and consistency because marketing is a long-term game. So yeah. voice is essential because if you, that's, for instance, the feeling you have when you write a blog or you do a video and you are like, hmm, there is something causing friction, but I don't know what it is. It's your voice most probably that you are mm-hmm. you know, not being very convincing or you don't come across as solid as you are it's because your voice is not clear so yes voice is one of those things when you are clear about your voice marketing becomes easy what i do when i do branding with my clients we do an exercise about values so i let them tell stories and from their stories i pull out words that they keep saying you know Mm -hmm. And then we make a list and we we group those values in categories. So, for instance, communication, transparency, ethics, whatever. We take then those values and put them together with their personality traits. For instance, they say, okay, I am outgoing, I am funny, I am thoughtful. And that it's already the characteristics of your personality. And the voice is how you bring that personality out. So, for instance... If you are, you know, funny and you are light, you most probably will use light colors. You will use a vocabulary Mm. that is lighter, you know, and you might speak faster and you have uh, whatever beat music, you know. But if you are somebody who is more paused, who is more poised, et cetera, et cetera, you will have very elegant elements of Mm. design. You will speak slowlier you will carefully choose your words so voice is not only one thing it's the combination of several things but if you go to your values and you go to your personality traits and you put that together you have a good base for your voice that's a great exercise for somebody to do today is to or whenever they're watching this is to think about what are my values what's important to me what's my personality and then where where's the nexus And the third thing you do after you have those two lists is how do I combi these in my work? So how do I, for instance, transparency, which is one of your values, how do you combi it? Well, I made a mistake the other day with an offer and I guaranteed the transparency and I said, and and I extended the bonus, whatever, yada, yada. So that's how Mm -hmm. I, I, I guarantee my transparency or I write terms and conditions that are in layman terms so that everybody can understand them without needing a lawyer. How do I, uh, clarity? Well, my, then again, my vocabulary is clear. You know, I, I, so when you have the two lists, your values and your personality traits, then you ask yourself, how do I manifest these in my work, in my daily work? And there you have Michelle, a great basis. Michelle says she just started a list of her values on a post-it note. And so I'm curious, what are your values? You know, Claudia, is, it's easy for somebody to say them back to you, especially somebody who knows you fairly well. And Claudia knows me and my work. And so when she says transparency is one of my values, it's so wonderful to hear that said back to me. Um, I also know that that's one of her values. She's, an, she's also incredibly straightforward. She can see a problem and she's not going to dance around the problem. She's going to share the problem with you. And I think that's just one of the things that makes her so wonderful to work with. So I'm curious, what are your values in terms of your business? I would like to give an example of a value that I have, which is to make it easy to work with me. And if if I'm not the right person for you, I want to make sure you get the right person. So for example, on a sales call for somebody, I always start out by saying, this is how it's going to go today. This is the transparency. 
And if I'm not the right person after listening to you and I can't help you, I'm going to help you find somebody who can. And I truly mean that. And the other thing, another example of this is in my emails, I was just launching a workshop I'm doing today. And I know that my audience, my email list was getting a lot of emails from me. So I said at the very, I actually started it at the bottom. And then the next email, I moved it to the top and it said, if you don't want to hear about this workshop anymore during this round, just click here and you can be opted out. We'll still be friends. Like that's my voice. We'll still be friends. You're still going to be in my community, but you'll only see me on Sunday mornings where we can have coffee together. Like that's like, and then I was like, you know what? I want to make this even easier for people. So I put it right at the top. So the first thing you see is like, you don't want to hear about this. Go ahead and click out. And that's how my personality of being, you know, straightforward and my values of being transparent kind of merged together to help me create that particular piece of content in my voice. Well, for instance, in my case, one of the things I believe is in the uniqueness of everybody. And I also believe that you should find a marketing style that suits you. So I also take that into my work. I, I have my programs and inside my programs, I have some flexibility to customize it to what you really need. Mm-hmm. So because I also believe you shouldn't be paying for more than you're buying, which is, for instance, in those online cookie cutter things, you're paying yes. for a lot of things that you're not buying. So with me, you pay for what you're getting. You get much more of what you pay for, which is another value of mine, you know? So yes, then again, one of the things I have in my personality is I'm very straightforward and I'm being also very Dutch sometimes, so I'm brutally direct sometimes. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, you know where you're standing with me and you know, if you want to know the answer to something, you will get it from me. Mm-hmm. Not sugarcoated, sometimes you will, but you will, in the end, you will know what are your options. And usually, I and I see it in my content, I bring forward things that not everybody's talking about. And then Mm -hmm. I see very little reception. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, people is not ready for this. But I believe people should know about this. So I keep saying it. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, this is with our reach in our audience and the ripple that it has. It's the saying it over and over again that makes it more normalized. And then I find this is really interesting when I'm doing that, when I'm sharing something that's not very popular I do feel like sometimes I'm the only one standing out or or like I'm opening the window and like yelling out the window for all the effectiveness it is. But then I start to see other people in the industry are talking about the same things. And and once, (laughs) once you start to say it with your voice and you start noticing that other people are saying it, like you just kind of have to be okay with being that one lone ranger out there doing your weird thing until you start to like step into your voice and say it in a way that people can hear it from you. Yes. And you know, the other side of that coin is that if you stray away from your voice and your values and your personality, these things happen as well. Because I've been talking about marketing style and doing marketing in your style for about five of the 10 years my business exists, if not longer. And I did some small steps and I didn't see any reaction in the market, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, okay, I will stop pushing it. Mm -hmm. And now everybody's talking about marketing style and I am your woman. And of course, my inner critic begins to say, your woman, you strayed (laughs) away from your values and your convictions Mm -hmm. and your voice and you didn't push something you strongly believe in. So that's the other thing, you know, when you're not working with your in alignment with your values and your voice, it's because you stop doing the things you truly believe in. Oh, so true. And then you look around and you're like, okay, I'm doing this one size fits all thing that a guru taught me, or I'm doing this thing that really doesn't feel good to me. Like I hate webinars. I don't want to do a webinar. I will do a training. I will let you walk away with some real stuff all day long, but like, I don't want to do a webinar. And every, you know, I, I'm in a group of people who are like, but I, I followed along the exact steps and it didn't work for me, but maybe it's not supposed to work for you. Find something different. And when we can honor our own voices and our own values, we have to stay the course with it. If, yeah. if it doesn't feel good to us and we're doing it anyway, it's going to feel like shit. Yes. And why would it's you work? Like, so why would you like to do exactly as somebody else is doing? I mean, if you want to replicate the success formula, you have to do it in your way. You have to take what works for you. This, you know, the thing with, there are online things that are very good. You know, not all of them are, are very bad, but some of these online programs really don't show you the puzzle where you are 
where in the roadmap you are, you know? So you buy a product. Let me give you an example. Let somebody says, if you want to create a community, go to Facebook and create a community, then you will have people that truly follow you and then you can sell directly to them, right? Okay, so you get this community thing and you buy this idea to keep it simple. But nobody tells you how hard it is to create a community, what you have to do to create a community, what you need before you start buying the thing and that you might need Facebook ads, et cetera, et cetera. So you buy this product and you are there unaware of everything around it. And that's the problem with many of those things that they don't give you the context. You don't know what you have behind and you don't know what you're looking ahead. And that's so true. It's like they don't, you, you need to be met where you are. And as a marketer and a content creator, you need to meet your audience where they are and you need to understand that. Yeah. So one of the things, just to wrap up, I just want people to understand that finding your voice is important because first of all, it makes content and marketing much easier for you to create because you don't feel like you're putting on a suit that doesn't fit every time you want to create something. It also lets your audience know you like to go back to Liz's question, like, why do people care about me? Because they have to like you, you're a personal brand. They have to trust you and like you. It's just a, it's just a human fact. It's part of our, you know, way of interacting as humans. And um, if you haven't done that work yet, then that is where you might want to spend some time. What are your values? And if you don't know your values, my God, just get on the phone with your best friend or get on the phone with a colleague or get on the phone with an old client. If you don't know your values, do this. Find three stories where you felt well. Mm -hmm. Tell the stories to somebody, record them on an Evernote, whatever. Listen to those stories and listen to the words you're saying. Those are your values. Your values will come up. And I think that a mistake, and I, 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 you know, I could like talk about this all day, but I think a mistake that people make is what does my audience want my values to be? And that's a mistake because this is one place where we have to start with ourselves. Well, who are we? Because we can't keep putting on the suit that doesn't fit us Well, you anymore. can compromise on your values. I mean, no. I mean, if, you're, if people want you to be, no, you, you can't compromise on your values. So that whole question, what my audience wants my values to be, it's the wrong question. I it's 100% agree. Yeah. I want to tell you that the work that Claudia does, it actually pulls this all out of your head. And like she said, and like I will say a million times, she's very incisive and laser focused. So if you're struggling with this, she actually, and I have been through it with her. That's why I'm talking about this. Like the work that she does, like pulls it out of your head and helps you find your voice, the questions that she asks, the clarity that she creates. And she and I also actually have a program that we're just getting started where you work half time with her and half time with me. And you're going to wind up with a whole marketing system and the content to accompany it. We haven't really announced it yet, but we're just starting to talk about it. We finally have our sales page done. So uh, it's coming soon. But I want you to understand that like, if you've bought programs before and they haven't worked for you, it's not your fault. Maybe the program didn't meet you where you are. Maybe you need to just have some conversations about where exactly you are and what exactly you want your marketing to look like and what you want your business to look like. So I'm going to put Claudia's information in the comments, but join us again on Friday because we love talking about marketing. What marketing questions do you have? What do you struggle with? We want to unpack it for you because we both very strongly believe in transparency and talking you through the struggles and meeting you where you are. And may I add, very rarely you will find two people uh, two disciplines that work so well as marketing and content in one place. So take your chance and shoot us with your questions. <laughs> yes, we want to hear your questions. Please we'll share them. Be happy to answer your questions. And we would love to hear if you're listening to this on the replay or you go and you figure out your voice and your values and you want to come back, go ahead and put them in the comments and tag us because we'd really love to know, do you know your values and how does your voice match up with that? Exactly. So, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.